today inside the program. Radio Democracy go talk to the Minister for Information and Civic Education, Chernoba, who will be done introduced inside the program earlier. And Chernoba been the work now purposeful before President Bio appoints him. Quick background on Cherno, he attend the Albert Academy and also now graduates from Frobe College in 2006, who said graduate with social science and political science, and then later entered the Notre Dame University in the U.S., who said he do masters in arts, Master of Arts in International Peace, and uh, later we work for the United Nations in Liberia and in the USA, in the youth development and education sector, and later work for Population Council in the U.S., in the girls' emergency sector, and also work with Nike as brand manager, as brand manager, with I, um, Chernobyl, from the Purposeful, and he has been co-founder and also co-CEO for Purposeful, with I been there till the appoint him as Minister for Information and Civic Education. This is the first time we get them inside the studio as Minister for Information and Civic Education. Once more, good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning, Salon. Good morning, my brother. I'm glad you for the routine always. The last time we host in, uh, now on the radical inclusion and the role of purposeful in that area. And today we host you as Minister for Information and Civic Education. This appointment come to you as a surprise, but quick one, congratulations on your appointment. Thank you so much. Thank you. I think this uh, uh, appointment is an honor, uh, an opportunity for serving the country. I think for me, it's not whether it's a surprise or not. It's more about the privilege of being asked for serve the country I love and for continue for do waiting I always don't care about. We have for advance this country in the right direction. So I had no expectation for say they will appoint me or my name would on any list. But I feel incredibly hum um, humbled and honored. And I look forward to do this job um, with every zeal I get. I give everything in my life for make sure say I do answer the best of my ability. Since the appointment, are we don't uh, like after the approval of parliament, you don't take up duty? Uh, two things. One, it's been overwhelming. <laughs> There's a lot. Uh, all the calls, all the attention, all the advice. Everybody gets everybody gets advice. All man gets waiting a while you do it, you know you do. Um, it's also been very gratifying walking into the ministry of uh, information, what used to be information and communications, and meeting all the people the way they, they the professionals them, you see the hunger in them, they all want to do well, coming to the parastatals, I don't visit so far, SLBC for example, and just seeing that people are looking up to you, you know, the, the most emotional part for me in all of this is being the reaction of people them on social media, and across different platforms, people say, oh, we know this man, we believe in him, we believe he will do well, we present, you don't make a right decision in this. For me, that name means, say, there's a weight on my shoulder. I know people would expect for that to do a lot of good work. And the president for left, you know, 7 million Sierra Leone as in day, for left all the one in the end say, no, you, now you will be the minister in this global information age. This era we will need civic education, a combining two and they, and it give me the incredible honor for say for do this job. Every network they don't for sleep. I the scared na net and members say, hey, I get a big job. I need for deliver. I need for deliver for the president. I need for deliver for the people of Salon. I need for deliver for my family and for the people who they look up to. So we officially take up office as in you go to the ministry. Describe the moment for you where you meet with the people we get for work with. The first time we, we go to the ministry, so as soon as I know the ministry has been to um, not be information and communication, so the ministry don't be separated now. And uh, on the communication side, the president had communication, technology and innovation. We will be led by my incredible sister, the youngest cabinet right, um, cabinet member right now, when um, um, Salima Monomaba. So in the on that side, on the information and civic education, nine uh, media lead. So what till we decide from the outset, because me and Salima will come out obviously um, from you know different background. We think about leadership, not for just grab grab. Not for say oh law fair to that they get we say no law work together. The president wanna work together as a team. And we get a long history. I'm a sister and I'm a paddy. We all hang out together many, many times. 
we say any step we take in this transition will for sure the values of co-leadership we put young people in charge so the first step we go to the ministry together in fact i think the first thing we really interface with the staff not been the um, handing over ceremony with the outgoing minister outgoing minister now the, the colleague minister we don't go uh labor uh minister Radu Soare, we call we for say he can hand over the documentation to him will we are enter that hall you can see the anticipation and the excitement and some trepidation and i think we all man been sit down there waiting me and salima tell them the first thing we will say is we're not family we know a lot of people in here we the thing to new minister don't can things we, we first instinct now for reassure them say we can follow work together follow figure out how for support them for be the best versions of themselves and how me and Minister Ba, Salim Ba, will work together for advance the agenda and the vision of the president. The ministry, before this time, there be information and communication, now, now information and civic education. As the minister for information and civic education, what is the term of reference and the work of this ministry? So, the role of the minister of information and civic education, the role of any government, sets the policy direction for provide leadership for provide supervision for very specific institutions that we do under you and in the case of the minister of information as well now for serve as the primary spokesperson for the government of salon and when i say primary spokesperson i don't mean say that now you know what they do the talk but you and the ministry for 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 be the vehicle by which the government they engage with the people of Salon. So within our own task with the present month sets for we now with civic education, now for also provide the framework, the platform and the tools them for engage the citizens of this country on the issue of civics, on the issue of civic education. So one for instill a sense of pride in we we serve as Sierra Leoneans. Some two know who don't who we not don't deal at this country. We get so much for be proud of. One for focus on the values that we present build and emphasize. Feed the country. Women's empowerment, climate change, digital literacy and technology and innovations. We civic education portfolio among others. And for work with the institutions then for work with community-led groups, with, uh, with community leaders, then. institutions who already exist in Salon, for that we advance the civic education, the civic knowledge and excellence in Salon. So, so we'll take them to the next level. So looking at the fact that you don't acknowledge, say, a lot they for do in the civic space, another angle go they say, I mean, China Babi already did in the NGO world. You don't fully transit or you still in between? <laughs> uh, I will always be an activist. Okay. In fact, I consider myself as a feminist activist in government. So uh, I think, say, life is a continuum. There's no, like, one stop, one way to call. So I'll continue for be an ally of the people in uh, the feminist space. The one they really advance girls, right? I think so they know, so they get in me a principled, dedicated ally. But right now, my primary job, without any doubt, now as Minister of Information and Civic Education for the government. Now, uh, Minister for Information and Civic Education, already before this time, government been get the national. Um, civil, civic Education Council when a NACID. What is the role of NACID now in, in as much as government don't add civic education to the Minister of Information and who's supposed to draw the line between the work of NACID and the, and the ministry? So every ministry gets so for example, you get Ministry of Communications Technology and Innovation, but you also get uh, the National Commission for Telecommunication, right? You get, you know, you, you get Sierra Tel, you get the, the authority who then gets now for, for comms. So you do get sub-agencies within 
the infrastructure of the ministry. What the presidents do is first a lay the foundation, both for innovation and technology, and for civic education. A lay the foundation. In one case, he set up a directorate. Now you talk about the council. They put a competence team there. They build the platform. They don't develop with the Ministry of um, Education with Dr. Senge Bidede, a new civic education curriculum. So it all lay the platform. But what President Bill wants to do is he understands if for deliver on the bigger picture of in top five and for take this country into the 21st century where one follow will get to for lead for be a leader in the fourth industrial revolution. We're not for treat civic education just as something within the curriculum or for just left them at the council or commission level. He wants for elevate them to cabinet level. Therefore, the issue of civic education now, they are part of the table on the cabinet. That then gets a cabinet minister we in, in, in one of in primary focus then for think about whose tools that we need, whose different platforms that we need. How do we take this to the next level? So you see and that way they say you get a ministry, you get the MDs that we can be under the ministry, right? And in this case, you get with ministry and one of the institutions that we will superintend now um, um, the the commission for civic education and, 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 and democracy. Earlier you say, uh, as Minister for Information, you work now for ensure, say, you communicate government programs to the public. But as also in addition to civic education, what are you going to do in the civic space? Same thing as any other minister would do, we would supervise a parastata, for example, okay? What will they do in the civic space? Will they elevate the conversation, bring a kind of cabinet level? Will they set very high policy goals? Will they support not just the council or the commission, but will they support other institutions then and help them for raise additional resources, bring in different partnerships? Will they take them out to the next level? Will they continue for work with them? But this is an opportunity now for create a national civic education program where they get the attention of the president constantly because of the cabinet, where they attract additional resources because they bring additional knowledge on it, where they elevate even the status of that institution there because they know say now they name the part of the cabinet list. So this is an opportunity for that we use now as a ministry, me and my brother, the deputy Yusuf Kachama Sandi, we own leadership and expertise for bringing and coming add on to it exists. And take them to the next level. So working with other partner institutions is very key because in the first term administration of this present um second term of this government, we see there was no proper structure coordination among ministries then. You see that they can talk this, whether they come now different something else they talk. So in your own case, in line with why I make example of you um other partner when I Yusuf Keke Thomas Sandy. I mean also I don't first of all start for ensure there is a proper structure of communication between the two ministries and other institutions then? Waiting me and my brother Yusuf Kekatoma Sandido make very clear is that we work very closely as a team. That's not the charge with the president gave. The president actually, if you're not listening to doing the uh, oath taking, the president has been very clear. He asked me for work as a team. All the ministry then. In don't set the pace. In don't set the vision. We don't go now for follow. In this case, we get the advantage of being the, you know, those two ministries combined are one of the youngest ministry there. You know, the Deputy Minister for Communications, na Mr. Sano, we are another very young man. Me and Yusuf Kekato Masane, and of course, the young minister, we na Madam Salima Ba. So we want for sure that within you, they get to put young people in charge. Me and Kekato Masane, for example, some of them know, but now we're in a class from, from one academy till from six. We've been friends for a very long time. We get a residue of goodwill. We get a long time with them. We go collect together. We play ball together. We don't eat together. We don't do so many things. So the relationship already exists. And I think, say, the presence in the wisdom say, I put these two people in together. What do we do now? And we are one left um, family understand. The, we want to take a very systematic approach to transforming the way that information and the government they communicates to the people or the way civic education they take place. We not come today, we not, now we first, now, now we don't know first week. We not come say, oh, changes, changes, changes. We want to engage the ministry staff. 
we have to understand all the systems and processes that we then get. We want to conduct a systematic assessment. Waiting government they get out of each system right now. Waiting at the potential of the MDA that we did under we. Waiting at the limitations that we then get. But the goal we will get, the vision we will get, now to your point, is very clear. Now for make sure say governments they communicate to the people of this country. They interact, not just communicate, in a systematic way, consistently, with credibility. I mean, commitments that we will always provide credible, factual information to the people of this country. We will not lie. We will not be ministry for lie. I want to make that very clear that we will be truthful to the people of this country and that we will provide the information in a timely manner and in the way and format where the people they want and where the people they need. We goal now for change from government or with system, not just for talk to the people there or talk at the people, but for talk with the people for communicate and engage in a way where people and will feel the difference. So that's it, not the vision. In terms of bridging the communication gap, and you just state the kind of structure and system we will not really well work with. We not just one they go meet people and talk, but now give people and the chance for interact with them um, as well. Another view would doubt if the structure and system already they in place for let this really happen. Clearly not in place. Yes, okay. fully. Okay. My point what I make the other day is we don't we inherit a fantastic work we will predecessor do. Minister Rado will go down in history as the minister we lay the foundation for we transform information, communication, and government engagement at this country. Because he repeal part five of the uh, public order act, he makes sure say he advise he lay the institutional framework, policy framework, it all laid them very, very well for we all. It all left certain blueprints. But then the transformation we need in information, not being for don't take five years. It need longer. We on job now for build on that excellence day. And let people now begin for realize the benefits of that. For how they may interact with all the institutions that we do under we for example, SLBC. How would they move from analog to digital? How would they become the primary tool where they interact with the people of this country in a way we put them and say they see them very, very proud of? How would they take Slena, Daily Mail, IMC, and other institutions that we, they, we, would they, we people in the begin for feel how government press attaches information officers them? How then they produce information where people in the interact with and engage? Okay. How now on civic education that every citizen at the last village, at the last mile, get access to different tools, to different information for engage and for understand, say, wait, if I get question, I get side for go. If I get problem, I get side for go. For go report that problem. Day. If I want to talk to my minister or my parliament, because that's not civic education. And if they ask me what they are proud of about my country, I get tangible things and for points to. And I understand my relationship with the states, with the institutions. I get I respect and all. So all that and a big transformation we need for happen. But I go assure you, by the way, one of the institutions that we will be co supervised in a post, we are another one we will also need for build on the work they don't do now for take to the next level. So we 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 build on a foundation that's been laid. And I know sit on and say you say the systems already exist. Okay. They will not need, they will not get job if the system already so continue so continue for stay with me inside the program we they come to you shortly you don't take we through the first step them and things say we believe say if you i mean apply them then go really bridge the gap you so much focus on civic education and according to you a lot they wanna need um for do but we'll look at a recent um event we get for do the um parliament the sixth parliament of the second republic and as a minister of um information and civic education which you will talk or assess when your assessment on president's bio in speech during the state opening if you want for conduct a lesson in the difference between political speech and a statesman speech the example we forgive that the speech with the president in a parliament that was a statesman that was a president that's looking at a legacy beyond a political period. This speech 
it sets the tone for the country. You know, a lot of people, they focus on the peace aspect and the overture. But there are two important elements of that speech, divided into two sections. One is it celebrates the incredible wins that we would all make as a nation for get to Usa we get to today. He recognized that the face of the parliament don't completely change. Irrespective of the absence of we brother them and sister them from the APC, President say we get 30 plus percentage of women who now occupy the seats of the parliament. Anybody will care about democracy, anybody will care about this country, will be incredibly pleased. And that is not to be an accident, not because of the leadership of the president and the work, incredible work, of so many people then, across civil society and across different sectors. Then. So the president, first of all, laid the foundation of the progress we don't see, the difference, the inclusion, the fact that we conduct a peaceful election, see, irrespective of all the threats then. But the, 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 the thing I want people to pay attention to is this in Big Five we will talk about. He sets an agenda for how Salon will become a leader in the fourth industrial revolution. And the Big Five, they are all interconnected. No one nor they will just separate from the other. He sets a goal. You know, one, we will be there on the side, we'll be there. one of the challenges we'll get with Salon is we get a country, we'll not get a clear national governing vision. And irrespective of your political party, you go for a line behind that vision day. Which the president do, he outline them. And the, and the difference this time is he outline them in such simple terms that everybody go understand. The speech not be long, it been to the point. He talk about the goals there, let will feed the country, let will do human capital development with a particular focus on women. And skills that were relevant for the 21st century. So not to just for all of just okay. you talk about youth employment. La, 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 because I five points the president make. La, la, make sure see family and I was understanding five points in the, with not the big five. So from, from um, um, human capital development, the presidents talk about the uh, youth employment scheme. And he promised that with him from a manifesto that he will, he will create over about half a million jobs for the young people of this country. And then he talk about the essence of technology and infrastructure for transform both the digital and technology and innovation space and also the physical infrastructure of this country. And finally, the one thing we everybody don't complain about. They say, oh, public service, we not get civil service. You know, each party where they come on a power, then they blame the civil servants. Then. And this president say, it is set an ambitious agenda for transform the public service. So we he we don't land on that point. Then he transition to the part of the speech we get the biggest applause. We call on every Sierra Leonean for embrace peace and national cohesion. We call on every Sierra Leonean for put aside with personal egos and embrace the greater good. Within that they in the best interest of this country. And then he make concrete suggestion, concrete steps, a concrete action for set up the committee where they review very specific logistical challenges and reports that we come up from the elections and make recommendations on how we do it. We can look at more about the work of this elections review committee with the vice president, the chair, the work and within the expectation from this committee in Nimna Chernoba in the minister for information and civic education. One area we, we begin to talk about at the elections review committee we chaired by the vice president, Dr. Mohamed Jule Jalo. For listeners, take me through the terms of reference and the work of this committee. I think important uh, yesterday, uh, make and clear, say the committee in job, the president's been very clear about what's in the committee day for, and what's in the committee not day for. Because some people then um, kind of no understand what's in the committee day for. This committee get two specific objectives with the president set, and I want for me understand clearly which are the objectives here. So I want for actually take from the president in speech where the president outline so people can understand clearly within the committee they do. 
the president say the committee get two-fold objective. He say one, for review the existing legal framework the institutional and operational arrangements, that's how then they operate the operations, and for look at the local and international observer mission reports then, and one. Two, for let them propose now key reforms for institutionalize their recommendation, yeah? We go improve the performance of the entire electoral architecture, so not to just for ECSLO all the election management bodies there. The reason we make this important is this committee, somebody say, oh, they're not going to put vice president the vice president a referee, na player. This election review committee, you know the, no game, no replay. So no, vice president also, not to, not to referee versus player. You know they for review the election we just passed. You know they for review the numbers, the content that that process the, the only <coughs> competence body we get for review than the, than the courts. If any question me day, waiting this day for now for say, how do we look forward and be better from a democratic perspective? We understand say the president sure. acknowledge say yes, reports they don't come, some people they point out say something for don't happen, and as since have say there were logistical challenges, not challenges that change or question the fundamental outcome of the elections. No. But what in this committee they do, now it get the highest body where possible, we're not the vice presidency as chair. And they bring together development partners, civil society, religious, kind of all other professional bodies, every we sector of society for say, let's look at how do we the, improve the opposition, the, the opposition, the part forward. of the setup. Look, President is an inclusive president. The proposal now that it will include the different parties in parliament, the different leaders, because it gets for deal with institutional arrangements and legal framework. A confidence, say, by the time we get to the operations of this, I the pray and hope that we brother and sister and my APC could not take their rightful place in our parliament. But I go assure you that if they're not did it, not to because this government no invites them. If they're not did it, not because they're not take this. Now, after the 2023 20, elections, we get plenty report them from local civil society. For conduct to elections, observers are observers for a reason. We listen to them. We the president on do with this committee say, okay, when I report, say when I don't write on the logistical challenges and operational challenges. We focus on their one and day. We see how we could do better going forward. But as I say just now, I'll make it absolutely clear. The questions of elections results in a salon, now only one competent body they handle that. And that not through the courts. The time for that's been done past. What we can do now for review. Then logistical, of, you know, some, for example, some station and they start getting late, some for little, for don't project. This is not really, say, oh, this is not really part of the law because it's CSLC. We do everything we were required to do. I think it's also important for the people to understand, say, every election gets beyond challenges. No election in a salon don't get, you know, don't get beyond logistical challenges. And after every election, it's CSL. them we the observers and they make and then use them reports they did now for try for advance and push the next election better. What is different this time is its excellency the president don't say we don't just review this now corner. We the create this election system <coughs> committee we the put no less a person than the vice president as chair of this committee we the bring a broad based group of citizens to because the president cares about democracy, cares about improving our institutions. If and that's not an if the vice the president then they chair this committee and they get for review um, concerns them as you mentioned earlier for sake of the no, 2023 no, no, elections. No. Okay, finish. Yes, for sake of the 2023 elections 
and the vice president being be part of this election as the running mate to the president. And this election, now one way, different groups then don't question the credibility. How fear then would they in the review of the concerns then we come up? I think this is now a very a really important life for people to understand. This review, not, a, not to a review of the content of the election. But therefore, so do which concerns them. Not, yeah, but now for review, institutional framework, legal framework. We are a country, this nice state institution. What will be in this civil society? What will we call for let government set up credible structures there? One of the things that we will call for, now for make sure, say, the leadership of that structure, they, it come up from the highest office. We will call on the rape thing or other things that we want for let the states carry, let the states in wait they be in something. You want to make sure say either shared by someone crossing for longer on the day plan set. Um me and my brother um Yusuf Keketo Masandi, they take a very systematic approach. We want to get the plan is this. In one hundred days, we go don't conduct all the reviews that we need for conduct. We go don't do an assessment of all the institutions and the structures that we do under we. We go don't use that information they for draw a progressive plan for where we want to take the ministry and the ministry apparatus consistent with the vision we excellency don't set for you. We too want for doing that. We know they say in 100 the whole thing will not change because that will be misleading the people. I don't say you say truth and integrity now watch words for you. So we they spend this next three months, we know about the 100 days we want people they can talk about first month for we really do an assessment. Talk to every staff. We want to talk to everybody, the cleaner, the workman, and all the institutions that will go across this country to engage. We do a systematic assessment, a review. We they now develop a plan. And in 100 days, when I go see the plan, the personnel, we will make that plan the public, the structure we will need. We will create a resource mobilization plan as well. And we will begin to see the implementation of that. We want very quickly in the next month for let you begin for consume government information different from in the past. That you go know say credible. You go be sure of its source. You go see how the consistency of the message, how it come out from the same way, and how it reach people in the ways where people want. You go also begin for see how dynamic government information be. The different tools and platforms that we will get for you for bringing our kind to the 21st century. But longer term, we vision. We come up from that sector. We have to think about how people they think. How do you access information in the right kinds of way? So civic education, we need for review and take to parliament and cabinet additional instruments them who they use as a basis for take things forward. So I think we get a lot of work for do on the policy side, on the partnership side, on the structure and system side, on the resources side, and in 100 days, it will all be one big plan and we will not start the implementation. Now, um, after the August 8th riot or incident of 2022, government being set up a special committee for look at some of the things that we been lead to that. And part of, uh, or part of that committee recommendation now for ensure see, the Ministry of Information and Communication then get rank to public communication and informed about government happenings to the public. And going for today, again, is uh, August 7, 2023. And before this time, we've been see police pull a press release on arrest for the public, then they in doubt. Would that arrest, how must they arrest? As the Minister of Information and Civic Education, it can give information on that. Yes, I can provide the information we will provide. I think what I will tell you is, there are two things for consider when it comes to freedom of information and access to this information. 
you just mentioned August 10. August 10 na be na be a volatile security situation and na be a time where the security of the state was potentially threatened. We see an attack on the state security apparatus and the security uh, sector very aware of what did happen in the past and they don't learn the lessons there. One reason why you see that press release is consistent with that recommendation that we will inform the public about what did happen. And that press release, the state security apparatus explain as much as they can right now. The information we the public need to get is that the state security apparatus don't uncover credible plans for undermining the security of the state for use the it was as a result of this that they landed at the island so we get for search the helicopter we search the man them and they show we then documents them Thereafter, we communicate with the Sierra Leone Civil Aviation Authority, the Director General, Mr. Moses Tifa Bayo, and a team of civil aviation authorities. Then step also visits the scene on that day. They meet with them. We discuss with them. Then tell we say the helicopter illegally and lawfully they fly the skies of Sierra Leone. The civil aviation engineers them together with the weightsman and the two weightsman them, they been get for work together na in them fix the fault by the helicopter. From there, then the helicopter begin for fly the Cam Hastings um airstrip. We the police begin for search the entire area because there were a lot of rumors. We search the entire island we not discover anything of security concern. From there, we left the place. We come back now at a low police station. Even yesterday, on Sunday, a team of military personnel from the, from the Republic of Sierra Leone Armed Forces, together with some uh, armed police team, they revisit the place yesterday under that rain. How things they go? Show me vegetation and me at go calm down. People will they send you message to me that you work about things they go from bad to worse to you know go come, you know go come. Then I decide for say, elect self out, you pick in time, now you pick in. Bad bush not there for two way, you pick in mine. Now that you make a say, here yeah, I come. Let yeah, begin tell people how to man the misbehave na country man. Mm. I no want to talk about to man in performance na the ministry the mercy. If you see report card man, then be fish away day. We are commoting na the media. I lock me eye on social media. People fish are not get information man. If you see the kind where I will show man dead, if you know the kind couple where show man the old, I say, now somebody do me a change show man. He said that you are about to say yes, so. He said that you are about to say you know what to make some of them brother. What to make go pull some of them brother, make them go to them first. I say no, I say no idea. Now it is that you are cabot. It is most of them man and they are richer than klepto. Go in loan, the one baptized. I say, eh, the big man again. Now I say, so man no get story, man. So man no get story at all. Mm hmm. Why we can't you don't get your mind? I say, me and some Baba them, they talk them days here. Some youth Baba them. I say, before we they discuss, the one don't sleep. Now they ask, I say, Baba, what do you take? Nine person call on me, see me, and me, and he say, what about it? You know, no, say now, the new thing where they now, now Dr. Kush.
Nothing noble. Too much of one thing is good for nothing. Me, not the honorable that you work about. Well, from Wakabot, the program Good um, Morning Salon, they continue. We come over to the studio guest, Shane Oba, Minister of Information and Civic Education. You don't talk a lot of things the more you plan for, do changes and growth, where people get what they see as time goes by. But a view day of certain people for say, most young people working in a key position, if certain intention rise, they're not able to test, I mean, able for stay and feel the heat. In your own capacity, you and your team, which you will say in line with that because you have done so much emphasize say on another the youngest kid on the block the difference between the perception and the reality is that at this time the president not just appoint young people them because they are young they appointed young professionals we get record of accomplishments of delivery in the different sector not just me and my colleagues them, but across the different ministries them. I will say with humility that I don't think a very tough circumstances there. From when me this school, I don't be a leader. I have leadership, not to by age. Bishop Crowder may not be senior prefect. Albert Academy may not be senior prefect. Um, children's Forum from, from three. I don't be president nationally. I don't testify to the truth commission. I don't travel all across this country. I go for a big college. May not be prime minister. May not be a radical spam pusher. I come out today. So leadership, I don't set up a global institution as alone. We don't go out and be one of the absolute best in the world. We don't raise incredible money and move agenda. I don't sit down at the UN, Security Council, General Assembly, speak the EU, World Bank. So we are battle tested. You know, me for say we're not going to be tested in this job. I'm sure we will put some foot forward, some foot back, we will make some mistakes. But even as we do that, we take this task, we get a leader, we don't say very clearly that he go mentor we and make sure say we are also mentored and support. We go be humble. I think that humility day, Naengo help we that even when we make mistake, we get a lot of data in we experience. My brother Keketoba for the past five years then at the front line. I've been press secretary now and the deputy minister. So it's a strong ministry. Sano don't lead a whole government um, institution. Salima gets incredible experience from the STI as a lawyer and also just globally. So I think we all are bringing a lot to the table we will we use for um, tackle whatever challenges them come away. Most time away, people can just take up position. The idea can so rosy and fresh. We can make people keep eager for say, well, a better way than put this person on a try. But again, when they're in the system properly, you can see them begin going in a misdirection, misplace of priority in their mandate. In your area, I go and sure say you've been in the system properly. I mean, you what's not going to go on a different way. The president don't set a vision. He don't put together a fantastic team. And chief minister, and I a six-year-old young man, well-educated with a record of accomplishments. In foreign minister, and another young man. In agriculture minister, and a young man. Like higher education. We get a lot of young people. They will get a lot of accomplished 